Welcome to today's live show. I am, of course, joined with the very special Dr. Robin Thompson, and we are here to discuss breastfeeding complications, specifically with latching issues. Now, before we started the show, Robin and I had a quick chat about this. And before I get started, I really would love you to hear what Dr. Robin has to say about the term latching issues. Here you go. <laughs> I'm a bit of a naughty girl, aren't I? No, um, you're not. You're I fabulous. do try to avoid the word latching. It's like latching the door, opening the door, locking the door. And for me, that's what comes up in my brain. And I know we're all different. We're all very unique and we do think differently. But I, I talk about the oral cavity function, the, uh, the, the anatomical structures and the ability of the baby to draw the mother's nipple and breast tissue. So the, the, it's all there. Uh, it's unique to each baby, but it works really well. So I don't use the word latch. And there we go. I mean, how how much better could you say it, Rob? Um, I think, and, and that is why today we are going to be revealing the top three reasons why women do experience those painful latching complications when breastfeeding. So we know that you are familiar with that term and that is why we are happy to use it. And we love that, that you are researching breastfeeding and um, whether you're pregnant and um, hopefully you are pregnant so that we can help you avoid these painful complications but perhaps you are already experiencing those i'm very sorry we have just lost a light bulb ladies and gents oh the light bulb <laughs> bulb's gone out <laughs> that's the beautiful uk for you sorry about that for our viewers i know it's a bit shady on one side now but one of my light bulbs is just thrown and you cannot foresee that so yeah we will pretend it hasn't happened <laughs> No, you, you're, you're, you're creating the light that's necessary. Oh, bless her. She's too lovely, isn't she? Thanks, boss. Well, I hope that you find today useful. If you have any questions, queries or comments to share, do post them below in the comments. We can um, connect with you. As, as we always say, we love to connect with you guys. And if we have any time, maybe we'll pop your question up along the screen as well. So... Dr. Robin Thompson is, of course, um, the founder of the Thompson Method um, and the key principles of the Thompson Method. One of the most commonly known one, one that I can resonate with personally, is avoiding painful breastfeeding complications. This was a huge part of your PhD research, wasn't it, Rob? That certainly was. Certainly yeah. was. It was, um, it was very interesting when I was asking lots of questions and and observing carefully and coming up with information and then researching the anatomy and, and understanding the function, the anatomical function, the, the muscular function, all of the factors involved with the little baby and her mum, unique mother, unique baby breastfeeding. There are no two the same. They are all different. Yeah, and that's absolutely. another thing they taught me. They taught me much about how the differences are, how they work together, and how those differences can be a special benefit to them. It's not necessarily that they have to have problems, but uh, in the modern times, we seem to ha be having excessive breastfeeding problems. Yes, yeah, so true. And and mm -hmm. I think a nice transition into that would be um, to be aware of the forceful techniques, which are part of the modern um, system, mm -hmm. I suppose we could say, um, and the handling, the forceful handling of baby and your breast in those very, very special three golden hours. Um, of course, you you taught me that. I learned that a little bit too late, unfortunately. And going into the second baby, I have all this knowledge behind me um, to understand why we need to avoid those forceful techniques. Did you want to touch upon what you discovered from your unique experience in both the hospital system and in your private uh, home birth practice? Yes, um, and also in my maternal and child health practice as well. Uh, so it was across a, a broad spectrum of, of observing women. But my research um, started with the question of why were so many women coming out of the hospital system with breastfeeding complications, in particular nipple trauma, uh, breast engorgement and mastitis. They were the most common. So that got me on the trajectory of asking lots of questions and I do I am a sort of a person that does ask a lot of questions I, I, I have to try and find out why that's my the way my brain functions how on earth that ever happened I don't know but it does that's what it does so I work in a Thank way goodness. that 
<laughs> I work in a way. So with the forceful techniques, that became pretty obvious by the way the babies were reacting to the force of being held by the craniosurvival spine, the mother's breast being reshaped and the nipple being directed to the nose. And today I've heard a mother say that, that she was being taught to direct her, her nipple to the ceiling. Yeah, so, I've, I've heard that personally, actually. Oh, gosh. That I happened had so today. Many. Just today here with one of my senior team, she, she told me about that situation. So it's really important that we avoid touching a mother and her baby. The newborn does not need to be handled by anybody else. That is so important. The only reason would be with an APGAR less than seven or a major complication. Yeah. So we would not want to handle a mother's baby. That's her baby. She's been through the transitions of, of growing her baby, giving birth to her baby, and now she's ready to transition to breastfeeding her baby. And we really should not interfere with that because it's like every other breastfeeding mammal on the planet. They need to be with their mothers. They need to use all their instinctive skills for survival. And they are very, very clever at that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I think that, that one thing that we encourage women to, um, to be aware of um, is that if you are in a situation where perhaps baby's APGAR score didn't make seven and you were separated at birth or you weren't able to enjoy that first breastfeed, even the first few hours or days, possibly even weeks, that doesn't mean that breastfeeding isn't possible for you. It doesn't mean that you can't um, enjoy a pain-free breastfeeding experience. It means that your mm. unique situation has its own set of circumstances. Um, mm. But having that preparation is absolutely key and that leads me to my next point point. Um, and if you want to learn more about the three golden hours dr robin's phd research um you would might like to read her thesis let us know and and i will pop you over the article for those but like i said that transition transitioned us quite well into the next point i wanted to make which is lack of education robin knowledge is power right mm -hmm. And, and look, education I, allows for space to make those informed decisions that you just mentioned. Right well, now. education increases our knowledge. It's important with education, though, to completely understand that no two people on the planet are the same. We're all individually unique, genetically unique, biophysiologically unique, anatomically unique, neurologically, psychologically unique. We are unique, so we cannot make the same um, recommendations i make suggestions i don't tell women what to do i don't tell them that they must do things i talk with them about their unique situation and i observe what's going on with them and their little baby and then i can help them work through like online at a distance <laughs> without having to touch them and uh and talk them through what's unique for them and work with them to achieve what they need to achieve i think so, that's the special um, bonus to the Thompson method and yeah. our online education online system I suppose that's perfected is that because of the gentle guidance that's offered and the fact that you don't need to be grabbing or, or forcefully handling or mm. peering over anyone yes. it works beautifully and, over a screen doesn't it you know the yes. bonds that we create with each other this way is is very unexpected in my experience and very very special and we, we do not have the right to touch women's bodies or take their babies without their consent. And in most countries, consent is a legal requirement. Mm -hmm. So it's really worth in each country to look at what the legislation for consent says. Yeah. And, and, and I do have that in my template for women uh, who are planning a birth in Australia and U UK, wherever, wherever it's feasible, they can look up their own legislation to see but we do not have the right to touch a woman's body without her informed consent and that means sitting down with her talking with her not standing over her not coercing her not creating fear for her it's gentle it's nurturing and it's also understanding that she has knowledge so we can encourage her knowledge and we most of all for me when i'm talking with a woman she's giving me cues all the time about her maternal instincts and i can help build on my knowledge with that as well absolutely and and i think 
I mean, it's always a good time, isn't it, to mention that hospital policy is not law. And we're yes. always learning ourselves. And in fact, Dr. Robin and I went live a few weeks ago, probably about a month ago now, actually, time is flying. Um, and we did have a really deep conversation about our rights and how we have the right to decline mm. care. We can say no. You know, I think in our, our culture, our society, we, f we feel like we're being rude or difficult if we decline something that's mm. offered. But but it's important to understand why and, and having mm. that education behind us. Uh, for me personally, this time going into the second birthing journey, second pre pre pregnancy and second breastfeeding journey. I feel I have so much more control, Dr. Robin, because I have this knowledge behind me and a support system I can reach out to if, if I need it. Mm. And I know that I can just, we're in the world of technology, aren't we? We can Google something, we can, we can reach, research something, we can read papers so easily and, and really find out for ourselves what suits our unique circumstances. But also having the education, like you said earlier, on understanding the oral anatomy, having having access to your resources, which aren't out there. We don't have la lactational consultants go through such a lengthy study period. Um, you know, IBLCs, for example, they have a lot of education behind them. It's just the modern teachings of breastfeeding practice is is lacking that one to one care, that touch, and and maybe. Um, someone watching who is a professional like our lovely Sarah and Kelly who are IBCLCs and also Thompson Method practitioners have all said how mind blown they were but how adding the, the general anatomy knowledge has really widened their skill set and how they can support mm. women especially mm. those who are experiencing breastfeeding challenges. Yes and I very much enjoyed expanding my education when I was observing these beautiful women and with their babies to into understanding you know the as i said the craniocervical spine its closeness and function with the oral cavity with the tongue muscle i've done a whole lot of uh, work on the tongue muscle and the frenula that we have in our body and yes. uh so yeah and and that has taught me so much more by by following that because it was inspired by the women. It wasn't something I set out to do. It was inspired what I was seeing and I needed to know more. And so that took me on a different journey. And, and, and without being like, you know, show off, my professors did tell me when they reviewed all the literature that I was the only one in the world that had looked at it like this. So yes. I felt very privileged that uh, they had done that and that they, they did tell me that. So, Absolutely. And now yeah, I want it's, to important, sure. it's important to say that we 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 love these wonderful women. They're working amongst women themselves. They are they set out to do these roles, don't they? Because they want to help. They're not setting out to hinder anyone's experiences. But I think this is a great opportunity for us to question why breastfeed wild breastfeeding rates are so incredibly low. Here in the UK, it's one percent at six months, and 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 a lot of women wonder if that's to do with returning to work. But the number one reason, especially in Dr. Robin's research, that women are forced to end breastfeeding is because of pain. It's not because of returning to work. And there are many, many women in our community who are able to successfully continue breastfeeding after returning to work. So mm. let's question why breastfeeding rates are so, white, so low and why so many women are forced to end before they want to. Is it because of pain in your experience? Let us know, we'd love to hear from you and hi, Hi, Teresa. She's our trusted follower, Dr. Robin. She's been watching nearly all of our shows. And, um, and she said her mother breastfed three babies and um, she had a bit of a nightmare. And she went through, it uh, sounds like her mum went through a lot. Um, sometimes professionals just aren't aware of their consequences of their advice, which is, which is also true, which is why we need to continue questioning and learning, like Dr. Robin said. So that's very Thank true. Thank you, Teresa. It's lovely to see you. Thank uh, you, sweetheart. It's lovely to hear from you again. Yeah. And hi, Alicia. Thanks for watching. So uh, the third and final point, the top tip, uh, as the title says, is the lack of support. So this the third, the, one of the three top reasons why women do experience uh, breastfeeding challenges is, is because of the lack of support. And, and in my experience, that was absolutely the case. Um, and not only uh, did I have a lack of support because of the time that I had my son in, um, it was the support available just wasn't working for me. Um, 
you know, I tried everything. I was told I was doing it wrong. I was told that, you know, baby's mouth wasn't wide enough. He had a tongue tie. There was all these problems with no solutions. And um, one day I decided to make that leap and purchase the program. And within 24 hours, I found huge relief. My tears had dried, my, and my smile had come. And um, yeah, that's why I'm so very passionate about spreading the word, because for me, it's a personal experience. And within a few weeks, I had slowly and gently worked through those, those challenges. So when I speak to you ladies, I speak from experience, I speak from the heart that um, I understand, as well as having the education behind me now, I understand um, probably where the turning points were for me. And it was definitely uh, involving those three golden hours, for sure. So, Dr. Robin, we are able to reach out to yourself, to your wonderful team, to the wonderful admins in our club at any point. They're around the clock, all around the world. If we feel overwhelmed, if we feel like we've hit a little bump in the road, it's important to be able to reach out as soon as things start turning, right? So we can mm -hmm. avoid further complications. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And again, it's up to each individual unique mother. I have no rules. I do not use mathematics because our body is biophysiological and we are all very unique. Now, sadly, I've just had a, a talking with a mother in the last week and she was told that her breasts were too big and ugly to feed her breast to feed her baby that she would never breastfeed. And, and that just breaks my heart because she had a session with me and she was breastfeeding her baby. She struggled with her first baby. They told her the same thing would happen. There was no positive approach to it. It was all about how bad she was and how yeah. it was not going to work rather than looking at what are the things that we could do that will gently guide her to use her knowledge and to follow her instincts and to do the things that you know, a mammal mother does do to be with her baby and, and do the things that she wants to. So, and I do, myself and my team, Rachel as well, we, we have an enormous amount of women who are struggling and we do our very best all the time to make sure we help them reach their ultimate goal. And of course, you know, there'll never be 100% of anything, but we always do try very hard and it's a very high percentage of, of uh, positive outcomes. Yeah, um, sure. And I also have to thank my daughter, Joanne, who's now my boss. My breastfed baby's now my boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful and turnaround of events. My absolute um, top of the team, uh, Marie and Jackie, who do amazing work. They're all skilled at different things, but collectively they can bring it all together for me. There is no way I could do this information sharing without them. So I can I can share what I know, but I can't do this sort of thing uh, that we do together. <laughs> well, um, you Chelsea. never know, but it's true. We have uh, uh, we have so many um, wonderful women working behind the scenes at, yes. at, at the Thompson Method, as well as those that are on the forefront as well. All our new qualified Thompson Method breastfeeding practitioners and educators, which are now making their first steps into the local communities. It is just a wonderful time here. And of course, mm. it's important that we thank those that are involved. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's interesting that you mentioned, um, Dr. Robin, breast size. Um, we didn't we didn't really touch upon that today. But I guess no. that does, it does go with the first, um, I'll bring that back up, the first point we made on forceful techniques and handling. Oh. It's also forceful advice, isn't it? I was told my breasts were too large, baby's mouth was too small. There was always a problem with our solution. And we mm. hear it all the time, don't we? The we size do. of your nipple, the size of your breast, the baby's mouth, the tongue, the palate, there's all these um, mm. problems. And actually, like you said, the success rate with the Thompson Method is all about drawing the nipple back to the soft mm. palatal cleft, right? So yes. why is it happening? Why Why are these um, well, negative associations, why are they there? Why do they exist? It's part of a process that's been happening over about 50 years. It's an education process. And, and it has been used. And in fact, I, I used it uh, many years ago myself and then just decided this was not what I expected to be to be doing. And uh, also, I think we, we just haven't had enough time to uh, spend with women. We're not, not actually sitting with them. We're actually doing, saying in a hurry. You know, the system mm. means that we're being accelerated through the system 
Whereas if a, a mother's at home, like in my experience over 25 years, then I have much more personalised time with them, much more side-by-side -side time with them. And, and I actually achieve more in the way of getting to know them, getting to know them in their individual unique circumstances. Now, I'm not saying every mother can do that, but a higher percentage could be not accelerated. Yeah, and and accelerated is a huge problem. Yeah, and I think that's that's why we we are so passionate about the education we offer online because we're aware that that, that kind of con, con, community and con, continuity of care isn't actually available for a lot of us now. Even myself here in the UK, I'm very privileged that I am able to plan a, a home Ooh. birth with a midwife who will attend the birth, um, all included in our, our NHS care, which is fantastic. But I also understand that there won't be the same level of closeness with care. It may not be a midwife I'm familiar with. And, and that's what Dr. Robin is talking about. And we've, we've got a lady. Hi, hi, Shen. Thank you so much for watching. Um, any tips for big breasts? I'm going to connect with you afterwards and we are going to have a chat. But I'd just like to say, because she says, I feel like that was my trouble having breasts that were too big for my baby's tiny mouth. I think you'll agree here, Dr. Robin. Your breasts aren't too big and your baby's mouth is not too tiny. Your, breasts, perfectly unique. your breasts are perfect, Shen. Yes, they're perfect for they you. are. And there are ways to work with your breasts. So yeah, I think slowly. I think I admit having large breasts myself, it can be a bit more complicated. Um, but probably because I didn't know what to do and I didn't have access to that information to begin with. But there's, I mean, yes, there's a well. And also, there's a social attitude about about breasts as well. Big, small, you know, large Little, breasts. Small, two, yeah, hundred percent. Apart from the 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 lack of understanding or the lack of time to spend with women if you're in the, in the systemization of the you know the whole component of what goes on for mm. women in the system and so many women are telling me their stories and they're recorded so it's not it's factual information mm. and some of the stories are just so heartbreaking honest so heartbreaking yeah, they really are. and, and for me the heart. shocking thing is how casually it's spoken about like um mm. You know how they speak like it's their problem like it's their fault that their body mm. being in their mm. natural way is is a problem for breastfeeding mm. i can't breastfeed because well breasts come in all different shapes and sizes so do nipples and <laughs> believe it or not so do babies although we're told otherwise absolutely <laughs> so unique yeah and that's one of the very beneficial things that i learned over the years is the uniqueness of every woman i was taking particular notice of that uh, i was seeing some horrific trauma horrific I was I, I could have it used to make me go goosey you know I couldn't imagine what the pain was that they were having but we were able to breastfeed uh, and most of them over some of the most horrific trauma yeah. that is available some of it is available not all of it obviously mm -hmm. but over over the uh, four years of my research um, you'll see some of that in my thesis as well yeah for sure. I think I think it's really um, I don't know we're in a very sad time as far as education and mentoring uh all the things we need to be beside even the 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 students coming through we need to be able to be side by side with those students and people with experience which there are many of us around across this country anyway many of us who could provide such valuable mentoring support um with, with years of experience for, for beautiful women and for midwives as well. And when you're connecting the two together in your mentoring um, way of, you know, following through with your education, it, you do start to see that there are many differences. Even though you have the education, it's not the same for everybody. It's not the same for every baby as well. So it's really important to be able to uh, fulfil your... your um, professional duty of care to be able to see those those differences absolutely that's so true yeah. and, and i think in addition it depends on which country you're in what the policies are in which hospital you plan to give birth in if you are planning to give birth at hospital but that doesn't mm. mean these might be bumps in the road but that doesn't mean that achieving successful enjoyable breastfeeding isn't possible it's very possible it just means that you know like you mentioned dr robert having a plan in place um your template has been so very helpful for me this time around um, i've been able to tweak it i've been able to personalize it i've been able to take the bits that suit me and that is what is so amazing about our resources because 
you're not forced to sit down and follow one route. You have a wealth of information at your fingertips that you can take the selection from to suit your unique circumstances. And when it feels like you're getting overwhelming, you can pop into the club and reach out to the team and they'll guide and support and direct you. And it is just very, very special. So if that is something that sounds good to you, of course it sounds good, um, but you're looking to learn more, or perhaps you've stumbled across us um, chatting away today and you've not heard of the Thompson Method, I would love to share more. But what I'll also do is I will pop some links below um, so you can learn more yourself and, and, and check us out. Le learn more for yourself and explore it all in your own time. Um, but mm. the three top the top reasons why um, we feel women are experiencing these painful breastfeeding complications is the forceful techniques, handling and interruptions during those three golden hours. It's also mm. a lack of education and support in that education. So being encouraged to make informed decisions and then a lack of general support, unique support tailored to your unique circumstances. So we hope that is helpful. Dr. Robin, you have been incredibly busy these last few months. You have right. success, <laughs> successfully launched the Breastfeeding Academy and you must be so proud of yourself and the team for now finally we are watching them, like I said earlier, take their first steps into the community. I would like to ask you just quickly, what's your message to those special ladies this week as they make their first routes out? I think that's brilliant, but I also would like to give credit to Rachel Austin, Absolutely. who has, wise Austin has a hyphenated name, <laughs> <laughs> but Rachel has been a guiding star in developing the program. Uh, Marie and I have helped in a way of editing and reviewing, and then we all do another edit and review. And there are, um, what, there's something about 10 or 11 modules. The first module talks about language because we have a much more gentle, woman-friendly, woman, -friendly, woman un uh, being able to help women understand the language. So mm -hmm. it's not not hard. And, and so I'm very grateful to Rachel for that. Um, we've known each other for a long time, but we did never, ever dream that we'd be doing this together. <laughs> and what a wonderful and, dream it turned out to be. Rachel yes. is a fantastic um, yes. source of information as well. She's a great researcher yes. and what a wonderful key woman to have behind us. Yes. And that's going to be so Absolutely. Special. Yeah. And uh, between us all, Rachel, Sarah, Kelly and myself, we are seeing women, you know, regularly are seeing many women and we... Our, our outcomes are are good and you know again we always say it, it won't be 100 percent for everybody but we will do our very best to ensure that we are providing what we can for that unique woman in each session or whatever sessions we do with them and, and those that are out there i mean kelly sarah Susanna, Jill, all these lovely women that are out there, and, oh. you know, those behind the scenes, Tamika, you know, you said Marie, the, Jackie, yeah, the Ryan, admin, Ryan, team. Admin, yeah. it's just such a special, they go above and beyond um, they do. what, they what absolutely is even do. required of them. You know? yes, they do. Kelly, Kelly and, is always going above and beyond and she's, yeah. she's a very busy lady, six children herself, but she experienced horrendous um, trauma and complications with her sixth baby. I spoke to her last week, actually, um, in, a, in a fresh new interview. So if you'd like to watch that, do let me know. But yeah, we have incredible background stories. We have personalised history. We have so much that we hope you relate to. And I think um, congratulations to all the Academy graduates is a perfect way to end today's show. Thank you. Thank oh, you thank very you, much. Thank you, Dr. Robin, as always, for finding thank time. Thank you, Chelsea. Today. You're a good guide. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Well, ladies, we will be back next week with another relatable topic and we hope to see you soon. Have a lovely week and until then, goodbye. Bye, everybody, and thank you for those who came on. Yes, Take thank care. you very much. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye.